Okay, so in this final lecture, what I want to do is model this structure. So essentially, we're, we're done developing code, we're done building our solver. Now I really just want to, you know, model up an interesting enough little structure like this and put it through our solver and see the kind of behavior that we get. All right, so obviously I've modeled this ahead of time just so that you can see it, but I will go through the process just for demonstration purposes of actually generating this model. So if I tab into edit mode, you can see um, these, which are very obviously the cables, these cable stays. So we have a lattice tower and then these inclined cable stays. These are broken up into individual cable elements. So obviously generating this geometry without the, the, the aid of a modeling tool like Blender would be incredibly tedious but blender makes this uh, very quick and easy to do okay so i'll start off by just hiding this structure so i'll just uh, with the structure selected i'll hit h to hide and i'll do shift s to bring my cursor to the world origin and i want to add in and uh, let me see i'll add in a plane i just want to generate a single vertex here so i'll tab into edit mode right click and merge vertices at center okay so now i have a single vertex so i want to extrude this in the y direction by one meter and let me see i will extrude it by one meter again in the y direction Okay, so I'll go across, grabbing these two vertices, I'll extrude in the X direction by one meter. Now I've generated a face, I can delete that now in a second. And I'll extrude this vertex Y minus one. So minus one in the Y direction. I'll tab or I'll hit three on the number strip at the top of my keyboard to go into face select mode. Um, I'll select that face, hit X and delete only faces. Okay, so now if I hit one on the number strip and go back into vertex select mode, we can see the vertices. And so I'll put in some cross braces. So from here to here, so selecting these two vertices, I'll hit F to fill an edge. I'll select this guy and this guy and hit F to fill an edge. Okay, so I don't want to do that manual process for, you know, 30 meters. This thing is going to be 30 meters high um, and that's, that's two meters there. So I want to basically, let me see, what way will I do this? If I go into edge select by hitting two and I'm going to select, let me see, is this the best way to do this? Yeah, I'll select all of these. I will, let me see, shift D to duplicate. Hold Y to duplicate it in the Y direction. And let me see, I'll duplicate it up two meters. Okay, so now I'll hit Shift R to repeat that. So Shift R is a shortcut to repeat the last command. And I'll repeat it all the way until we're up here at 30 meters. So Shift R all the way up. Okay, brilliant. So that's our lattice tower built. Now, that lattice uh, tower has a lot of duplicate vertices, right? So if I go into vertex select mode, you'll see that if I select this vertex and pull it away, there's another one still there. So we've duplicated all a lot of vertices. Uh, I escaped, cancel that. So I need to eliminate those duplicate vertices because that's really going to mess up my model. Uh, but if I bring those into my Jupyter notebook, so I'll hit A to select everything. I will, let me see, is it in the right click menu? No, I think it's in the mesh menu up here. We'll go to clean up and merge by distance. And you can see at the bottom there, that's deleted 28 vertices. So now if I go and select a vertex, you can see if I grab it, there's, you know, there's only one vertex at that location, which is what we want. All right, so we're getting there. So now what I want to do is add in the anchor points for our cable stays. Now I'll, I'll have those 10 meters out. So I'll select this vertex here. I'll hit Shift D, hold X to constrain the axis, and then I'll type in a negative 10. Okay, and then I'll do my first cable stay. We'll go from here to the 10 meter height on the tower. So with that vertex selected, I'll Shift select this guy and hit F to fill. Uh, let me see, I'll do the same, another 10 meters up and hit F to fill, and I'll do the same another 10 meters up and hit F to fill. Okay, and that's my cable stays on one side. We'll repeat that for the other side. So with this selected, Shift D, constrain it in the X direction, and type 10, and then we'll just fill in our stays here as well. All right, excellent. All I wanna do now is divide these cable elements up into individual cable elements. What I'll do is go into edge select mode by hitting two on the number strip and select this guy and select this guy. And what I wanna do now is subdivide. So I'll right click and let me see, hit subdivide and then the subdivide menu comes up and I'll type in 20. So I want 20 subdivisions. You can play around with this, I've just eyeballed it. So if I now go into vertex select by hitting one, you can see I now have 20 individual elements here. Uh, this next cable stay down, I'll divide into 15 and then this bottom one I'll divide into 10. Again, there is no 
exact science to why I've divided them into 20, 15 and 10. It's just through a process of playing around and eyeballing what looks about right. I'd like all my elements to be roughly, roughly the same length. So going back into edge select, I'll select this guy, this guy, right click, subdivide, set that equal to 15 and hit enter. And we can see we've got now 15 and then we'll do the same thing for this and this except this time I'll divide it into 10 so let me see subdivide and I want to divide that into 10 and we'll go back into vertex select and you can see excellent so that's our cable stayed lattice tower just a simple little structure we just want to we want to observe its behavior uh, within our code all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this node this node, this one, and this one. So they'll all be pins. I'm going to apply some horizontal loading to each of each of these nodes here. We'll apply 500 newtons or something to each of these nodes just to see, really what I want to see is these cables become taut essentially, and these cables, they won't become fully slack because I'll add a pretension to the cables, but they'll sag a lot more on the right-hand side than they will on the left-hand side. And there's any number of different uh, analyses that you could do if this was an actual structure that you had to analyze, um, but we're pretty much just implementing a, a basic analysis here just for demonstration purposes. All right, so we've got to export the data that defines this structure. So I have, um, I've added a little, there's our, there's our code. I've just added another panel over on the right hand side there. So I have easy access to all of the Python codes that we wrote. So I'll export our structure first, which just means I select the structure code and I can now hit run and that will drop that CSV file defining the vertices and edges or the nodes and edges onto my desktop. I'll now define my cable elements. So I'll go into edge select, hit B to box select, and I'll click and drag. And then I'll shift click, making sure I get the last cable element on the on the left connecting to the structure. And then I'll do box select and click and drag. And again, shift click to make sure I get all of my cable elements. Okay, so these are the guys that are, we're defining as cables. So we've got our cable code selected and we'll run that, that's fine. Now we want to export our restraints. Well, I said I was going back into edge or node select. I'll select this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and I'll export those. My mask within my restraint code is uh, is set at one and one so they'll be exported as pins rather than rollers so let's run that okay that should be fine and now our force locations so i'll hit alt a to deselect all of my uh, previously selected vertices and i'll just hit b to box select and then i'll click and drag and select all of these guys so these are the nodes that we'll be applying forces to so i'll just run the force locations code Excellent. Okay, so that's our four scripts run. That exports all of the data defining our structure onto our desktop. As you know, we can now put that into a folder called data beside our notebook in our folder system. And uh, well, let's jump over to our notebook and run this uh, run this structure. All right, so here we are over in our nonlinear analysis code. So again, everything in this code is unchanged from the last lecture. We were finished developing this code uh, and we've written it in such a way that all we now need to do is update the parameters in here. Here. So I've, I've I've already updated the parameters. So um, I've set a cable area of 0.00004 square meters. The bar area is 0.002, so that's obviously the, the elements within our lattice structure. I've left my Young's modulus at 70 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. We will take self-weight into account. Now I've set the self-weight for my cables to be 10. Uh, kgs per meter and my bar elements to be 40 kgs per meter again this isn't based on any particular structure these are just figures essentially plucked out of the air just uh, for demonstration purposes really now i've set my pretension to be 10 newtons again no significance really to that number you know if you have an actual structure and there's you have an actual value for the pretension applied to your cables by all means you could put that in there but this pretension is really just a a non-zero value that we've applied um, so that we don't get a singular matrix and again you can play around with different values of that pretension value now we're going to apply 500 newtons to every one of those nodes on the right hand side of the tower and um, that we identified over in blender and our axis is going to be x okay so it's uh, a positive 500 which means means it points in the positive x direction which is to the right one thing that i have played around with quite a bit and just to achieve convergence here is the number of force increments convergence threshold is 30 that's just left over from um, whatever previous analysis we were doing i've left this iteration limit at 10,000. again that hasn't changed 
pretty much since we've defined it earlier. And what I'm saying here is let's check for slack elements after a after the first 100 load increments. So again, I'm not, as I've said previously, this is not the only set of these parameters that will achieve convergence for this structure. You know, you can play around with the different parameters and you are likely to achieve conversions as well. And indeed, there will be configurations of parameters for which the structure will not converge. But you'll see uh, you'll see those and you'll, you'll run into those as you're analyzing your own structures. So I've already run the code and we can go straight away and look at our, our results. I'll just zoom out a little bit so we can see the full thing. So this is our structure to analyze. And again, it's, uh, it's a little bit messy because there's a lot of annotations on here, but you could remove some of those annotations. Obviously, you've written the code to add them all, so you know how to remove them if you want to remove them. But this serves its purpose. We can see that the central lattice tower is consisting of all bar elements and our cable stays are naturally enough all defined as cables. So we can scroll on down to the much more interesting picture, um, which is our, our results. Obviously, we can see our structure achieved convergence after 5000 iterations and it didn't again it didn't have any issue converging all right so let's look you'll see i've added a few a few extra options in here and um, obviously you'll be able to download the code and, and see all these extra how i've implemented these but this is this is very trivial stuff you 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 know how to do this obviously after writing uh, the plotting code uh, prior to this lecture so anyway let's have a quick look at our structure here so here we have it there is there is our structure and of course we have our axial force color bar as well. So the reason that I've added these extra options is just to make this a little bit easier to read. So uh, what's the first thing I did? I implemented an option to get rid of the node numbers. So all these node numbers are a little bit, um, they're obscuring the behavior a little bit. So let's get rid of those. Okay, I've also, let me see what else have I done. I've also implemented a, a little flag here to get rid of all of these force annotations because again, they obscure things a little bit. So let's get rid of those. And um, I don't like all these little uh, nodes here for this particular structure. So let's get rid of those. And I've also, also, let me see, implemented a flag here to get rid of our reactions because you can see the, the vertical reaction pointing upwards here is an arrow that goes from here all the way up to here. And you can see 142.08 is, uh, is the compression or rather is the vertical reaction at this location. So again, it's a little bit messy, so we could get rid of that. And that just leaves the actual force arrows. Now we could increase the, the scale of our force arrows. So let's try that. Let's change that to two, just to get a sense of, uh, there we have it. So you can see there's the self weight of all of our cables that we're taking into account. And we have our, our applied forces of 500 Newtons pulling the tower over to the right. And um, we can get rid of those as well if we just want a really clean image. Okay, so there you have it. There is the behavior of our lattice tower. And exactly as we'd expect, we have the self weight of our cables is causing all of our cables to, to sag to some degree. Um, but obviously the cables on the right hand side of the structure, because it's deflecting over to the right, are sagging a lot more than the cables on the left, which are being, you know, obviously experiencing larger tension uh, due to the force being pulled over to the right. So you could dig into the behavior of this structure and go and explore the various different, um, well, let me see, what was there a force imbalance here, actually? The final force imbalance. Here we go. Okay, so the final force imbalance was, again, negligible, 10 newtons. So you can go ahead and investigate the, the various different, you know, forces in the elements, the deflections, the reactions, etc. And that's kind of all there for you to do. But all we really wanted to do in this uh, in this lecture was really just put our code through its paces with another structure. So again, you could go and change any of your parameters, change your pretensions, change your self weights, cross sectional areas, etc. Maybe you want to modify your code to have different areas for different cables. It's really, it's really up to you. You've written the code. You've done the hard work. Um, now you can, you can put it to good use. Uh, incidentally, let's, uh, let's see what does it look like uh, at different, different stages of convergence. So if I uncheck the final config flag, so now we're observing the behavior, the converged behavior of the structure for the hundred load increment. We could change that to the first thousand load increments, and we can see essentially we can observe the evolving, uh, the evolving behavior of our structure all the way up to final load increment. And of course, as you know, we could. It probably won't be very clear here, but if I put my axial force labels on, probably not much. Yeah, again, it's kind of useless in this in this uh, context. So labels like this 
are helpful for smaller structures, obviously. Um, but when we have a lot of uh, a lot of individual elements, our labels essentially just plot over each other. So that's not particularly useful for this structure. Okay, so as I said, I've added in a few little options here. I will I'll highlight in the code with these little symbols here all of the different changes I made in the code. I won't walk through the, the process of um, making all those changes now because it's kind of trivially easy if you've come this far in the course. So you can uh, you can just download this code and again, as I say, you can see all of the different little small changes I've I've implemented in order to implement these little flags here to simplify our plot. It's actually quite handy to be honest with you to have these. So there you have it folks. Uh, we're there, we're done. We have finished developing our 2D nonlinear analysis code. In the next lecture, I'll just say a brief few words to wrap up the course and maybe hint at what's coming next, what we'll be analyzing in the next course. So I'll see you in the next lecture.